I don't think I could separate my identity as an athlete and an activist. Basketball is woven into the fabric of who I am. Being mission driven and caring is a part of who I am. So to take those things apart is not possible, but I cannot be so driven by my identity as an athlete that like I lose sight and grounding of who I am when I don't play basketball. As far back as I can remember, sports was just always, always a part of my life. My dad refereed basketball for 15 years. He had this saying when we were growing up, like 100% is never enough. You always gotta give 110%. So I think there's so much of my parents that were trying to prepare us for life and knowing that, you know, of course you need discipline to be successful. Like they both really wanted us to be able to get to places that they had never reached. And I think knew what it was gonna take to, to get to that certain level. My sister, is six years older than me and was actually outed. It was like a bomb went off in our home. It was frankly like the worst thing you could be growing up in our household was to be like gay. I told my dad that I was gay on National Coming Out Day. Accidentally, I didn't know it was National Coming Out Day. So maybe subconsciously I knew and we got into a big discussion then and he started to try to use religion. And I was like, dad, like I go to church, I know God. So much of that pent up like angst and sadness that I had carried, it had been like transformed now with so much power. And so when I was going to the professional ranks, I wanted to be really open from the beginning of it. So in 2015, I wrote an article with the Players Tribune. And in the article, I say like, I'm non-cisgender. I knew at the time that I wasn't cis, but like I didn't know then what that made me. So even though I had said that in 15, like, and I didn't have the words and the language, I was also like disconnected from maybe really embodying that I'm trans. I was just exhausted and frankly, was just not trying to hear it. And God was like, okay, well, take your time, but like, I'm gonna just keep tapping you. Pastor Mark. The great Lasia Clarendon. <laughs> I wanted, I think, acceptance, but I realized ultimately that was like something between me and God that I found, but I was looking for that, like, you're going to be okay, essentially. Mm -hmm. Pastoring you, mm -hmm. in many respects, changed me. I tell this story sometimes even when, we do, when I reflect on our Ferguson work, you know, during the Mike Brown, like, pastoring you prepared me to show up for a lot of young queer folks yeah. in the movement. God was just like, I did not make you to be anything less than a whole person. And like that love that washed over me at the end of the day was just like, you were meant to be whole. In December of 2020, I had come out on Instagram, like officially, officially. So the first call I made when I knew I wanted to have top surgery was to our executive director, Terry Jackson. And ultimately with the league, I was like, y'all gotta be ready. I do not and will not become a political debate in sports. Fast forward 2021, when I posted it online that I had had surgery, which literally didn't make me any more or less trans from those few months of when I had surgery. And that was like when the bomb dropped, like the fetish we have with trans people having surgery and the way cis people view that as like, oh, you're really trans. People don't see the behind the scenes of like the toll that it takes on you and like what happens between Instagram of like the before and after picture. I have felt like I've been in the wilderness and there's no path. So it's like me with a machete, right? Like chopping down branches, like trying to build this path where there is no footsteps before me. Or maybe there's some footsteps, right? But not enough to just walk through unscathed freely. I've had to forge a way where there just was not a way. And I had people like Terry in my corner, I've had my partner, I've had my best friend Ran, I've had people supporting me, which has been amazing. <laughs> a lot of people don't talk about the cost of being a trailblazer, a change maker, someone who's a first. They often celebrate the first, which is like amazing. I'm grateful to be the first, but it comes with a weight. 
I've had to figure out like how to set boundaries for myself so I can be healthy and whole and survive in this work too. That like, I don't have to give all of myself to this work because actually like me taking steps back and me surviving and me like breathing and healing and like pulling back when I need to is what's gonna help me sustain the work in a longer run. After I had surgery in 2021, I realized how difficult the journey was to get access to medical care as a trans person who does want medical intervention. The Lasia Clarendon Foundation was started to give access to healthcare for trans people of color. Everything from like, it could be electrolysis, people need facial hair removal, hopefully bottom surgery, top surgery, access to hormones. There's so much more than like just throwing money at a situation too. Like money is always a factor. People need funds to get things, but you can't lose sight of like the whole picture of someone's access to healthcare. When I think about the future, I think about centering the right people in this journey, about empowering the right people, partnering with the right people, being really intentional about kind of every step along the way. And I think that's how you do it right.